Welcome to today's video. Dina Tollefson suggested that we do a challenge and it's the hashtag turquoise challenge. So that's what our video is about today. We're going to paint pictures that are based around the colour turquoise. So I hope you enjoy it and here it is. So this is a kind of test sheet for the turquoise and what you come to expect in a turquoise colour from watercolour you've got your strong right through to your weakened areas there with water so that's a, a, a very light bluey colour sometimes these can be uh, a little bit more towards the green side as well but that's your general turquoise colour. In mass tone, which is its how, how it comes out of the tube uh, in its thickest and darkest form, that's what you get. A, a very deep colour, although you can't keep it like that deep area there that I'm showing you now. When you're glazing this colour, you can start with this light turquoise. Keep adding this light turquoise onto a second glaze, and then a third glaze, and then a fourth glaze, and then a fifth glaze, and you get a really nice set of glazes there with it. One of the colours that you get with real turquoise is gold so I hope to use that in amongst my artwork that I do the way that you can neutralize turquoise is by using an orangey color and you get a, a very neutralized brown and that's using uh, cad orange but if I wanted to darken it and keep it dark, un unlike that which goes a little bit light, if I wanted it to be dark as much as I possibly could get it, what I'd do is get my turquoise here and add some purpley colour. In this case it's the um, uh, manganese violet and that goes from a uh, a strong mix on both right down to a, a weak mix with lots of water in and that's what you get with the weak mix uh, a, a nice pleasing purple but I will use that for any dark areas so this is my little test card to let me know what I need to know about turquoise and what I'm going to do with the actual artwork so here's a, a basic look at the kind of artwork I'm wanting to produce as you can see there's like a turquoise pattern in the background and uh, the orange in it is uh, uh, like a gold so that's and that's inspired by a piece of wallpaper that I saw on the internet I thought it was quite nice that and uh, the dress uh, I'm, I'm making uh, a turquoise colour and that may also have patterns in it but we'll, we'll see as we go along but this is the basic outline of the image I'm wanting to produce so let's move on to actually starting producing that image now Today's paper that I'll be using is uh, Einemule Fine Art, the anniversary version paper. That's um, £200 or 425 grams. Uh, I would say not paper really. It's not particularly the roughest paper you'll ever come across. But that's a paper I'll be using and it's watercolour paper obviously. Here's my preliminary piece of artwork that I planned out 
and here's the work that we're going to be doing. I've plotted it out using one of uh, these tools. It's called uh, a scaling divider and you, you go like that and the other end gives you the size that you need and you can check things to make sure that it's all right. So we've got that absolutely spot on scaled up. Now what we need to do is start painting it. I've not done any of the details because that will be put in with um, with the painting process later. So what we're going to do first is this background wallpaper. I'm going to paint that with a flat wash of turquoise. So let's put a mix of uh, turquoise in this Uh, in there, there we go. That's more than enough for the entire session. I think I might have overdone it. But uh, get that nice and wet. Get it all mixed up nicely. So it's an even consistency. It's really important to make sure that if you're putting flat washes on the the paint is even and and not especially if it's got things like honey in it because you, it can have like a, a streaky consistency if you don't put it on right i'm going to wet, wet that a bit more and now i've got a really full brush now and I'm going to go to the top of the brush uh, 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 painting I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit because it's, it's not quite the right angle and can bring that down a bit. Got to be careful here because I'm going to work around the edge of it in this particular bit. I'm hoping I'm going to get away with that. Looks like I might do. Right, do the exact same on the opposite side. Just get myself a, an edge of uh, paint. And you have to do this fairly quickly because once it's drying you start having problems nearly there and I'm open to see if we can make sure that that's all nice and even in saying that if it does have a bit of patterning in it from um, wash back it don't matter it adds to the interest of the painting so that's that's the uh, turquoise uh, background painted. The next thing I want to do 
is get a little bit of the the turquoise and really water this down because I'm going to put this in glazes and it's going to be the next section there which is that and always remember with watercolours oh there's something that I've missed I'll put that in there like that make that a continuation and I'm going to work round all the bits that I want to work round and this will be a glaze I'm going to put several layers on this uh, for the skirt and it's also going to have um, tonal values added to it as well and if you can try and follow the shape of the the dress or the skirt in that sense if you're following along don't just don't do what I did with there just going straight across uh, with this being a three-dimensional shape it could do with it being uh, following the line as it were of the dress I'm going to do this slightly darker than the others because uh, you might oh you might think well light's coming it is coming from that side so it needs to be darker yeah that's right I don't know that's something I didn't explain to you actually uh, on the image the light is coming from that direction and thus a shadow is cast at that side so this side will be ever so slightly darker but we're not we're not overly concerning ourselves with that yet because uh, this will be glazed we just want to get an initial colour down what we now need to do is leave this to completely dry so we'll be back in a bit when this is dry now this is all dry I want to redefine the shaded areas on the image on, on that side it's seeming to come that way but I want the shade at that side as it is there but it is different on there so I'm going to remodel the shaded areas on uh, the body there so let's remind ourselves there where that is I don't know whether you'll be able to see this so that area there will all be in shade I think because of the lack of light there although it's at that side where the lights coming from there's not going to be an awful lot of light there either so that will be a bit dark where it will be uh, where it will be lighter is round there so I'm going to do around there and like that and the face I'll just split in two like that and keep it fairly simple and that's a continuation down to there at this side We'll, we'll have that dark and then that will be dark so all that area there which has been hit 
like that is being hit with light. So we've remodeled that. Uh, that will also be a dark area and there'll be a slightly dark bit there and that'll be light just a little bit of shade there and a bit of shade there um, now with the uh, shadow coming off there that's going to go up there like that, and then up, up and join into that and as far as I'm concerned, that's the remodeling done of it. So that's that bit ready. What we want to do now is continue on with um, putting glazes onto this skirt area. Again, we're going to continue on glazing over this area until we get a, a really thick consistent uh, amount of paint on it and uh, this may take several glazes but again we, we're, we're going to go over the dark area Let's see if I can speed the process up by making it that uh, it's a continuation of what we did last time but we're just emphasizing certain parts of it but what we will do different this time is we won't cover as many areas we're going to leave some areas deliberately lighter Make sure there's a blend as well. It's a long flowy dress, so you want it to flow. And uh, make sure things all look as though they're coming into one another. There you go. After drying, we'll do one last glaze layer over the image and we're going to again do the dark areas because we want to really make sure that it looks three-dimensional. So we're starting on the right hand side again, getting that darker area. We'll add some water to the paint and uh, soften that area a little bit so it doesn't have a harsh edge and uh, we'll keep doing that and uh, doing little bits of shaded areas next to where the arm is that will be slightly shaded even though it's on the uh, lighter side of the dress and um, we'll keep uh, finding areas that may potentially be slightly darker than the light that we've already got on it and again we'll get rid of that strong edge by adding more water to it and it sometimes it helps to have a, a really strong edge but in a flowy dress like this it's better to let it naturally fade out in a, a very soft way it gives the dress that feeling that it is a soft kind of thing so we're just working that a little bit and uh, finding areas that again might still have a little bit of darkness in it due to being on the opposite side of where the light's coming from so for example uh, this area here and it literally is just finding little bits like that and that really is the end of the glazing for the dress I'm happy with the dress now 
I want to move on to doing the skin area such as the face and the neck and the arm so that what I want to do with that is get some of our cadmium orange I'm going to put that if I can open it I'm going to put a tinge of that just a little bit because we're not going to be using tons it can all be reused anyway, I mean watercolour paint can be reconstituted as many times as you want to. So get that into a, a liquidy consistency. Get plenty of water in it. Here we go. Let's see if I can use that up. Um, I'm taking a bit of this turquoise and I'm going to add it to that to make the uh, orange a little bit more mucky brown colour it's actually neutralising it but uh, for the first coat I don't want to make it too dark so I've got the colour I want it to be and remember it, this is going to this is going to be uh, a lot lighter than what it will be eventually so we're just covering the area that we're wanting to do there you go and uh, again a bit more there and where the hand is I might actually leave a a, a bit there to indicate light it in it. But uh, for the moment, I'm going to uh, put a stronger bit at this side, as that is where the dark area is, and maybe on that edge there. And again it's a matter of leaving that to dry but that will be your skin tone eventually once it's dry look how that now has mellowed into a, a a nice skin tone i'm going to emphasize the dark area again by putting another layer on it but uh, i'm going to make it a bit more bluer so i'm just going to use that and a tiny tiny little bit and it's that area and don't worry about it seemingly looking too dark it won't and you can always adjust it even if you do need to and maybe bits like that and start potentially putting uh, bits of detail in and I will you know make sure that some of these edges uh, not so strong because it's nice to have lost and found edges in your in your painting So again let that dry, that's the majority of uh, what you do when you're painting, letting the paint dry. One last glaze that we'll do will be with the uh, turquoise itself and that should go on 
and look quite dark and we can use this layer also probably to do the uh, detailing on it so I'm only going to do this in certain areas but that's a tiny bit strong Let's just see if we can there. Uh, there you go. Might think that that's a bit a bit strong, but it is a tiny bit. Let's uh, there you go. Get rid of some of these hard edges as well. And uh, again, let's wait for that to dry. Right, detailing now. So I just grab a little bit of paint. And uh, get the face in. Get the little bits. And they're only, they're not exactly details, to be frank. They're, they just give you a an idea of where things are on the face really and the, the, they can blend out into other areas I'm, I'm, I'm not doing a, a detailed face portrait so and that will connect nicely to the air when that goes in and that will be quite dark so that will also make the um, the face look a lot lighter when you frame it round something dark so that's something else you need to take into uh, into account when you're doing certain things let's get the um, air in and that is really simple I'm just going to continue with this idea of getting the orange while well, I've got the that orange and adding it to that uh, turquoise because primarily we're supposed to be trying to paint with turquoise really that's that it's the turquoise challenge not the orange challenge but so I've, I've neutralized the turquoise with this orange if I can get a, a nice consistently yeah that's round about where I want it and for this first layer I don't want to be doing There you go. Little bit of an highlight there in the uh, in the air, which there may well be. I'll just see if I can connect that up and get a bit more. Because it's always a good thing to try and connect areas up if you possibly can. And that's the air done. Now, if you notice, I'm not going for real kind of feel. I'm going for a very graphic-y kind of a feel. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned about it looking exactly like something. It, I want it to have a graphic feel anyway. Now, wh while I'm um, doing this also... What I'll do is I'll get some of these grey tones in round here as well. And that will continue on up 
into that and that area will as well but I'm going to try and do this a bit dry brush because I don't want too much uh, paint on on this shirt area I just want uh, enough to let you see that there's a bit of toning in it While I'm doing this toning, I might as well uh, do the other areas that need toning as well. always to give it a, a nice feel you can um, soften the edges so you don't have in, uh, really strong edges there you go I think that's that's nice and we've got areas that connect to one another which is always a good thing Yeah. Even if it bleeds in like that, that's fine. That's all part of the feel of watercolour. Sure, we the edges a bit lighter. And for the moment, although I don't need it now, I will put the shadowing what goes at the back of the it's not necessarily needed at this moment in time but uh, it, it helps you to visualize the actual uh, thing itself There you go, that's your uh, provisional shadow in there. We will go over that at some point. So really, the thing that we need to focus our attention on now is the uh, patterning and that kind of thing. But you must make sure that it's thoroughly dry before you start doing any uh, work like this and I'll show you what we're going to use next next what I want to do is try to incorporate certain parts of the gold that I'm going to be adding there'll be gold in this area and there'll be gold in this area but unlike that it's got a black band round there on the dress I'm thinking I wonder whether this might be nice in gold so that's why I'm going to have a go up there around that area so first of all let's uh, get that up there and I've got a thing that's already got some gold in it 
Now what am I using for gold? If I can find it, where have I put it? What one of the first things I'll be using is some more of this. Now uh, it needs something else other than that. Here it is. There we go. And it's uh, the Aqua Bronze by uh, Schminke. It's a powder, if I open it. Very finely ground powder. And it's metallic. So I'm going to add a, a, a teeny weeny bit of that to it. She don't need much. There you go, that'll do for now. i get some more if I need some. And a good thing with this is make sure that you get a good cleaning because it gets absolutely everywhere. But then just to get a bit of stability I'm going to put a bit of paint in it. And what you do as well with this is you you uh, add water to it and it then turns into a paint. Although don't be using too expensive a brush because um, it it can uh, make a mess of your brush. Now at the moment it's orangey, but I'll, I'll add some more gold and we'll keep making it more and more and more like gold. Another thing that you could actually put in uh, this is uh, gum arabic. There we go. Now we've got that. Uh, <clears throat> now we want it. Let's uh, see which areas we're gonna do. So it goes. It's like a belt that goes all the way right up to there, and then right down to about there. Now you 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 uh, probably can't see that, but uh, when I'm looking at it, I can see all the gold in it, but it just looks like a brownie colour to you a bit, as I can see on screen. It does anyway. But we'll we'll see about that in a bit once it's dry. But that's like a it's almost like a belt between the top and the bottom. We'll put the uh, stripes in now that exist there and I'm, I'm just going to basically block them in as best I can. I'm not looking for absolute perfection. So I'm going to get me water. Get that on.
So I'm going to do a bit of um, shadowing there, just to give you the idea that that's like an end of a For the time being, I'll leave that at that. For the uh, carpeted area, I'm going to go a bit crazy and use uh, the manganese violet. Why not? And you can use that later to darken certain areas. So let's chuck a little bit in there, if you can see. No, you can't. So. I'm going to see if I can do it there. I don't need a ton load. The only problem is with using... I won't... Yeah, I'm going to use a different brush because I don't want to get... Uh, any more on it. Get this wet and go to this purple. And make sure that it's all nice and consistent because if you, if you try applying it while it's still a little bit wet and a little bit dry and, and lumpy you won't get an even distribution I'm going to move that away because it gets in your way that. so Just carefully going around the edge, and uh, this area and up here will be slightly lighter because of having nothing in front of it and no shadows. colour. It's a bit darker. I'm going to make that edge there. So we've got a, a definite edge. And uh, there we go. That's that done. The thing that we need to do while we've still got that nice wet um, colour in there uh, of purple is add some of that turquoise again. This prime colour. I might add some of that orange as well. I just want to make a dark colour now. Because we're going to uh, use that to do as final bit of dark area such as the back of the air like that and although it's like a dark blue it will show us um, pretty much black this uh, to the normal human eye as it were so It's always worth having a go at. If certain areas 
just to emphasize and it just dealt with the three dimensions um, of the painting light and dark area then. and as is always a, a good thing to do have a continuation of things But we're still keeping that graphic feel. We're not doing fine detail. One more set of detail in there. Um, we're not that far away from um, re-emphasise that bit there. Really what we need to do now is work on the detailing on, on the uh, wallpaper like that and various other bits of detail. Once that's done the painting's really finished. So what we need to do now is the uh, pattern that we've got on there. I'm not going to follow that exact pattern. I'm going to do something that is similar and representative like a, a floral uh, Art Nouveau kind of pattern which would be nice so that is going to be done in the gold what we've got left I'm going to make it wet again and uh, what I'm going to use is one of these brushes and it's it's called a coach lining brush this and it's used by sign writers uh, it's quite large uh, I'll give you an example of how big it is. It's fairly long. Now it looks a little bit like, if you've not got one of these, um, one of these, a, a, a striper, or um, any long thin brush like that. So I'm just using this one because it's got a, a lot more load to it. It will hold an awful lot, so I'm going to wet it up and let it, and uh, I'll see if I can uh, put some more water in there. Right, so I'm going to get that fully laden up and make a start and go. And just random patterns. This is where you can be really experimental and have a play, join things up, have a go at doing all sorts of interesting.
seems what I don't want is to make it seem as though everything's just ending where that is. So keep playing. and start adding blobby bits mm -hmm. to represent maybe flowers or leaves might even put the odd occasional random dot here and there as well slightly different to the pattern that we've got there but and it's really nice using this brush because it's really responsive and you can control it really well I mean you can get move that out of way because it's slightly in my way that And you can paint for ages with it without having to put another uh, blob of painting. So for the time being that's where I'm going to leave that. I'm going to let that dry and uh, we'll do the final bits of uh, detailing in certain places and then that's the painting as far as I'm concerned, completed. Final little bits of detailing. Um, and it's just like softening up various things like this. And uh, making certain areas like that. Um, more interesting I just see if I can put a little bit of uh, darkened area in there and then there isn't that much more left to do. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, that's the painting done. So what have we done? We've uh, done a, a turquoise backdrop with the wallpaper that's got that nice gold finish on the end of it with the uh, Art Nouveau kind of feel. And we've painted it in a, a fairly loose but slightly graphic kind of a way. Uh, we've added this goldy orange um, under wallpaper at the at the bottom, that stripy wallpaper, and uh, we've finished the lady off with a nice, I believe they call it a mermaid dress uh, in turquoise with a a goldy black band round the uh, waist area. Let's just take a quick look at some of the detailing that we get. Uh, as you can see, if I wobble it up and down, you can see that it is a, a gold. And uh, in the face you've got quite a bit of detailing. 
on videos you can't really see the the qualities that come through in the actual painting but uh, I'm trying to show you really what what we're getting detail wise and obviously there's the bottom of the the dress and then uh, let's see if we can bring it down as a whole so that's been my hashtag turquoise challenge painting thanks for watching the video and we'll see you again in another video bye